Hi everyone, it's Mark here. I'm gonna show you my daily coffee routine with these two devices, the Rock Espresso Machine and Grinder. So let's get started. First thing you need to do, move the cat out of the way. So I like to use some really nice quality beans. I use uh, Mecca beans or uh, Skittle Lane beans also from Sydney. Uh, but this is actually Mecca decaf coffee and I'm just opening this fresh pack now. Uh, try and buy your beans uh, as fresh, try and use beans that are as fresh as possible. Uh, speak to the, uh, the roaster and find out when those beans have been roasted uh, and that will get the best outcome for uh, your cup. So I'm measuring out a, a dosage of about 16 grams. Uh, that's the Rhino mini set of scales there that I've weighed out. Uh, 16 grams of coffee into the bamboo uh, cup or beaker that comes with the espresso grinder. So I just pour the beans into the top of the grinder. Uh, that grinder can actually be adjusted. It can do espresso grind, which I'm gonna be using today, uh, but it can go all the way through to a much coarser grind for filter or cafetiere or different types of uh, coffee. So by the magic of uh, video uh, editing, I can speed this process up. I actually turn the handle about 50 or 60 times. It takes just over a minute. Uh, and that's basically grinding all of those uh, beans from the top part down into that bottom cup, uh, ready to go into the basket. So I like to just tap out the top just to get all those loose grounds through into the cup. Uh, and now I'm gonna get the uh, a protector for the work surface uh, and also the basket that the coffee will go into. That's the port filter that the coffee will go into and also the temper. So there's the, there's the espresso machine. So first thing I'm gonna do is take that coffee and the consistency of that coffee should be between uh, sand and flour. So it should have sort of a bit of a graininess but also uh, flour-like texture. Uh, and I'm gonna load that into the basket. Try and load that into the center uh, and distribute it evenly. So I've, I tend to just tap it on the work surface, tap it on that mat and that protector, um, just to make sure that it's evenly spread throughout the basket. Why do you want it evenly spread? Um, well, if the water goes through in an even fashion, you'll extract much more uh, coffee flavor and oil uh, than you would if the water sort of finds a way around the edges. So if you think about the way the water is gonna flow through, you want that to be as even as possible. And that's why we use the tamper, just to compact that coffee, just to get it nice and tight in the water filter in the basket. So uh, hopefully that water is gonna go through it in an even fashion. So excuse the fact that I'm wearing a bright yellow hoodie, and that was the cords from my hoodie showing. Uh, I've just put that, um, put that porta filter into the espresso machine um, and I'm going to get the boiled water in a moment and pour it through. I've also added uh, the scales in there. Uh, I don't usually do this, but um, it's kind of a thing that coffee nerds do. They'll often measure out the weight of the bean, 16 grams, and then uh, weigh out the, the shot that you pour from it. So I'm just pouring in the boiling water at the top and I think 16 grams of coffee should get you somewhere sort of like 32 to 35 grams of liquid content. I pull up the arms on the espresso machine and that allows the water that's in that top glass composite chamber, that black part at the top, to filter into the, um, into the porter basket and have some sort of pre-infusion that just lets the water and the coffee come together. I in actual fact pour through some blank shots first just to warm the device because obviously uh, the cold metal uh, can cause you to reduce your extraction. So now I just push down, give an even force both sides. Uh, you'll see that after a while the coffee will start to pour through and there it is, there's the money shot. And you can see that it should be coming through in a very consistent fashion. Uh, obviously I'm trying to lean over the camera so it's not particularly easy to do but you do have to give it a fair amount of pressure uh, for that coffee to come through it's not um, you're not just pushing a button and you're getting your coffee you've got to actually work for it and it's really nice to feel that uh, pressure as it goes through it's kind of satisfying and you'll start to see on the top that crema forming that sort of tan uh, foamy element on the top of the coffee uh, that's that kind of tells you that it's fresh and you've got them uh, got a, a great extraction out of the coffee. And you can see there the consistency of that uh, in that glass glass jar, glass cup. Um, and that it's a fantastic coffee and that's rich, strong, bitter, uh, rich, strong, bitter coffee. Now, 
Those of you that like milk in your coffee will see the obvious flaw in the lack of esteem and uh, wand for the uh, milk. I don't tend to worry too much about that. I'll often actually just sacrilege microwave my milk. Uh, and I actually use Oatly Barista Edition at home and I'll microwave that milk for about one minute 30, depending on your microwave. And then I'll pour the shot on top of the, the milk. Works for me. Obviously some people can't live without that proper foamed milk. Maybe you could buy a separate steamer. What I finally did there was actually pull through the remaining part of the water just to clear the machine out. You want that um, you want that coffee to tap out in like a nice dry cake fashion and fall into your uh, into the bucket um, that you see there, not box that you see there. So this is how it ends up: a nice, beautiful coffee, rich, strong black. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching that video, uh, and thanks for watching.